What is going on Yu-Gi-Oh! community YGO Paladin back here with another video and today we are going to be going to Paladins to participate in a YCS very important player qualifier tournament and I am very excited for this not only because we're going to be playing more Yu-Gi-Oh! with my favorite deck and uh you know basically and Danny's coming with us too uh, but basically, I'm excited for this because it is like a YCS qualifier thing. And I need to build a deck that's going to be competitive that if I was going to a YCS, how am I going to deck build it here? And it just like, it's going to be very competitive, you know? So I, I really want to get into more uh, feels like that because sometimes I play against uh, a fun casual decks, but I feel like a lot of people are going to be more on their A game today and just like try to go for that first place win. And I'm excited for that. That's what I want to try to do as well. So that's why I did some deck building here as well. I'll show you case the deck in a bit. But we did get a updated ban list and it looks fantastic. I absolutely love it. I love that tier limit got hit pretty damn hard. And uh, I, I hated that deck so much. So I'm, I'm not even like sad about it whatsoever. But we are not playing with that ban list. We are still playing with the old format because the ban list doesn't go into effect till the 13th. And I am expecting a lot of tier limit players, kind of like a last hurrah probably effort over there today. So I'm expecting that. So I had to deck build with tier limit and cash a tier still being uh, like, I'm sorry, with tier limit still being a threat in this format while also trying to play some cards that go against cash a tier because I am expecting maybe one or two players to have that deck. I'm not entirely sure. There might be one person that if he built the deck complete today, uh, he probably has it. So uh, let me go ahead and get straight into the deck profile here very quickly. Uh, it is a 42 card deck and some choices I was still like, uh, am I really going to do it? But I was up late last night to like do this stuff and I, I'll i explain my choices as I go along. So quickly going over the deck profile, we got the two Stratoses. I cut the third one to make room for two for other cards. Then we have the two Shadow Mist, the one Liquid Soldier, and then the one Honest Neos. That wraps up the Elemental Hero package there. Then we have the three uh, Ferrises. Two increases, I still cannot cut this to one. I tried that, my test hands were so bad every time I opened this card up and it just was not great. So I need to run two, I, I just have to run two. That's just how it is for me. Then the two Vions, and then uh, that's it for the Vision Hero package. And then we'll go to the Destiny package. One Plasma, two Mali, the one Denier, and one Dynatag. So I put Dynatag in here mostly because if I do get in my graveyard and I have to have Plasma out on my field, um, Plasma can be easily beat over if my opponent can get rid of my DPE, my Sunrise, and he's just 1900. That, that's really it. People can beat over that. So by banishing that, uh, Dine Attack from my graveyard, he gains a thousand attack points at least, so it'd be 2900. That would be pretty decent, and I don't have to rely on getting Honest Neos just to protect him based on just attack points, you know? So that is the main reason why I put Dine Attack in here. I'm going to see how well it does today. I was going to put Dark Angel, but I was worried about Bistials banishing it, and I... I, I don't know. That was just mainly the whole reason because if I had to build the strategy for Dark Angel and it gets banished right there, there kind of goes the whole point of the combo I was going into, you know, and then I don't know how to like kind of recover for that because I haven't really uh, played with it that much. Then we have the two Crosskeeper. I still like this card. I'm going to see how well it does today to decide if I'm going to keep it or end up just like cutting it for like two more cards. And then uh, my questionable choice, three Lava Golem. I, I, I don't know how I feel about this. I decided to put it in there because my side deck was like so packed already and I did not know where to put these board breakers and um I just decided let me put it in the main deck and see how well it does so that's one of my questionable choices like I'm still going back and forth with like do I really want it in the main deck and then going into the spells and tr going to spells we got the three hero lives the three fusion destiny three mass changes we still have the three dark ruler no more um I'm still debating about playing the forbidden droplets but as of right now, uh, Dark Ruler No More is going to do very well for me. Finally playing Ian Shuffles. My last ones I ordered got lost, so I had to reorder them. And then they're finally here. And then the ban list just comes in and just completely wrecks tier limits. So uh, we'll see how long I, I'll play that card uh, in this deck. Maybe maybe just for today, just see how well it does. Now, this is a placeholder. I'm not really looking to play Pot of Prosperities. These are going to be Triple Tactics Talents. But if my I'm going to be borrowing from a friend of mine. But if he ha doesn't happen to bring them, uh, Pot of Prosperities. So... Well, we'll see how well that does. And then I have the one as one polymerization, one miracle fusion, and then one rota, which brings our total of 42 cards in the main deck. Now, going into the extra deck really quickly, nothing much, too much has changed here. Uh, two cross keeper, one wander driver, one dread decimator, one sunrise, one absolute zero, one Esperado, uh, one DPE. I want to see if my buddy has a second copy because I'm thinking about running two of these in case of my opponent with Cacheteer banishes one copy. Uh, I have another one to go with. And uh, that's just mainly the reason, you know. Uh, so we'll see 
how well that does. And then if I can pick it up. Then we have the one Dystopia, one Dangerous, one Blast, one Acid, one Anki, and two Dark Loss. So that's it for the extra deck. Going to the side deck, we do have, since I'm expecting Tournament still, uh, three Ghost, uh, Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwoods for the time. <laughs> and then three Chaos Hunters. I did used to play this card back before Cacheteer was even around. And uh, I ran it at two. And sometimes it really helped to get some decks. But now that Cacheteer is like fully out. Uh, I'm kind of thinking about running it and see how well it does, if it does anything, or if I went to Lancia, but this one I think might be a little bit better. Uh, I'll just have to see how it does. Then three Book of Eclipse. I was debating putting this in the main deck. Right now it's in the side deck, and I'll see how well it does. Maybe see if other players play it in the main deck so I can get their thoughts and opinions about it. So right now, side deck. Then three Silent Graveyards, another card I ordered that did not come in with those Ian Shuffles, and I just had to reorder them. Uh, we'll see how long that card lasts because I feel like we're going to take these cards out after Tier Limit is like hit. And then lastly, 3D Barrier and that's it for the side deck. So that is my deck profile. I am very excited to be heading over there for this tournament qualifier event. I don't think we've had one of these in a very long time. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we have not had one. And I am just like, you know, getting into this mindset of like, hey, what am I going to be deck building against? What am I going to be doing? Like, because I had to think competitively, what am I going to be playing against? And uh, in that state of mind of wanting to go to a YCS, like this is kind of like how I how I deck build. I stayed up to like four, five. I don't I don't remember how late I stayed up till trying to figure out what's gonna be in my side deck, what isn't gonna be in my side deck, and my, what's in my main deck. So I I just got to see how well this deck performs over there, and just hope for the best. But overall, I'm just gonna have fun playing over there, and just you know have a good time. And that's that's really all that really matters. So I got to get ready and uh, hit the shower and get rest I, I gotta go and i'm just so overall excited and uh yeah uh let's uh head over to paladins unfortunately my friend forgot to bring the triple tactic talent so i have to be running the prod of prosperities but i did pick up his extra dpe so i took out my master of blast and replaced it with a second dpe for my extra deck oh. yeah, yeah. For round one, we are playing against our friend Jesus, and he is piloting, not surprising, Cacheteer. And unfortunately, I, I just like, yeah, I kind of figured this was going to happen, so I guess I'd rather get it out of the way and just sit through him playing out his board because unfortunately I have no hand traps in my deck, which I am kind of considering now actually playing hand traps, but for this tournament, I just did not have any. And um, yeah, my opponent's just going off. He's some, you know, had the unicorn play. He had the field spell going to unicorn. Unicorn's that one card's combo starter. And it's just, yeah, that Shangri Ura is just a, a very big pain in the butt. And then he's got the Diabolos, which is going to look at my extra deck and he's going to banish my Destiny Hero Dangerous. And um, from there, he summons out one of the He's, I think he can't remember which one. I think he summons out the level four. He summons out one of the Cacheteers. I think he actually, yeah, Rebirth summons out that and then goes into a Rise Heart since he did use Shangri-Ra's effect. And he's just locking down my zones. And I'm just like, okay. And then during the standby phase, he summons out the Unicorn from his deck because of Shangri-Ra's effect. And I'm just like looking through this, like, what can I do here? And I just don't really have that many zones to do it. And it doesn't matter if I was to negate all these monster effects because they still, they're continuous. So it's not even going to do anything. It's like, I, I sent Ferris... And then it just was not anything whatsoever. I'm just like, he, he's got this game. Like, he just really does. He's locked my zones. He banished another monster in my mon extra monster zone. Ban uh, locked another monster zone. And then even a spell and trap zone. I'm just like, bro, this is this deck is just, like, ridiculous. All I could do was just set one, pass, stand by face. He summons out a Fenrir from his deck. And then Fenrir is literally going to just banish my Ferris. So it's just like, yeah, he's going to get this entire game. And it's just like... This, this is uh, Cacheteer, unfortunately. We're going into game two. I start, I activated Hero Lives. He negated it. I had another Hero Lives activated, and he uh, had nothing for that. So I just summoned out, you know, um, I summoned out Shadow Mist, Normal Summon Stratos. So was getting out my plays. I was just like, what can I actually do here? Because I did side in some cards. I just did not draw them. So I'm just like having to play here with what I had. So I'm just going out, like going on my DPE, Wander Driver, using Wander Driver Recycling back. I believe Miracle Fusion. And, um, yeah, oh no, Ball of Resistance, sorry, Ball of Resistance, then go into Dystopia, burn him at least for 1100 points of damage because of its effect, and then, um, that was just really it, that's all I actually had, I did have the mass, mass change to go to the Dark Law after he prosperity. I used it, I banished his uh, spell card, I can't remember which one it was, and 
it, it's cool, but at the same time, it was just like, mm, he might have a backup here. It just like it, I just have to like cautiously play it. And I do pop his uh, monster because of my dystopias effect. I was able to um, destroy one of his cards, but he actually triple tacked. He took my DPE, and I'm just like, yeah, uh, he's going to kind of like just wipe out my board just a little bit, and he's gonna pop destroy. And then, yeah, he destroys that as well. He crashed it. And then I was just like, all I have is Wonder Driver. And now he has his plays to go into. And he goes into the Fen rear. He does have Unicorn still on his field. I think he had the Scareclaw. I think that's the Scareclaw one. Goes into the And I'm like, oh, great. So standby phase. Uh, he goes, you know, I bring out my DPE. And then he brings out Fen rear. And then I'm just thinking, like, what exactly am I going to do here? So I activate its effect to destroy it and Fen rear. And then I activated Miracle Fusion, banishing those two. Summon out the Sunriser, use Wander Driver's Effect to set back Miracle Fusion, go to Escorado. And then from there, I'm just like, his Shanger Era could uh, protect itself from destruction effects. And then I'm just like, I'm going to go for it, try the Plasma. It's not going to negate so much, but I'm just going to take it. So that's what I ended up doing. I equipped it to it, summoned out that. Then set my phase, I went into the DPE. And then from here, things are not going to really work out well because time does get called and my opponent had more life points than me. And it was just unfortunate. I probably could have won had we had more damage. If we had more time because I could have pressed for damage, go straight to the battle phase. When DBE comes back, go to battle phase, pop the equip spell card and pop. He's going to have a face down Fenrir. And then uh, I would have had at least a, a couple more life points than he would have. And then that would have been a result in a tie. But these are the time rules. So unfortunately, that's how it, this uh, match does end here. And I... Do have a better chance of playing this deck against next time, I guess. So it was fun, at least. <laughs> It's round two, and I'm playing against my buddy Aaron, who is using a Tri Brigade Sprite deck. And I won the die roll, so I wanted to go first. And basically, I opened up full combo. I opened up full combo, but I also had an E and Shuffle. So I knew what he was playing, and I kind of wanted to get that uh, E and Shuffle to use to out my uh, Shadow Mist from my deck and to get a search for a match change. So I do end up doing that later. My board ends up ending, like, very differently than what I thought I was normally going to do. Because originally, I was going to go into, like, a Plasma play to set up a Plasma to have a Walking Skill Drain on the field and probably a Dark Law. But things just went completely differently, and I ended up having, like, the Sunriser, a Destiny Hero, Dystopia, which I burned my opponent for damage, and I had Future Fusion, uh, I'm sorry, Fusion Destiny in my hand to go into DPE, and that just ended up on my board with a set mass change and a Shadow Miss on my field with Wander Driver to, like, reset a card from my Graver. So my opponent goes first and uh, goes next, and then he summons out Karaz, special summons out Sprite Blue, activates its effect, and I chain mass change to go into my Dark Law, and I did have, uh, I, I believe it was chain one, or no, uh, after these chains resolves, my opponent is going to get that search. And then, like, afterwards, um, I do use the Wander Driver. I use the Dark Law and the Shadow Mist. I can't remember exactly in what order, but I added Stratos to my hand. And I banished one of his cards. And then, um, really, it just like, tied down that I had the better field because I had, like, at least up to three pops on my field. And from there, my opponent realized that. And uh, he tried to attack, but my Sunrise is going to pop his monster. So he just decided to scoop from there and give me game one. Then we are going into game two. He starts off. He has the Fractal. He goes into the Kit, Nerval, all of that. He gets his usual searches. Summons out Karaz. Goes to Jet. Searches out Starter. Special summons out Carrot, I think. Goes into Gigantic. And then uh, he summons out, I think, Sprite. Oh, Blue. Yeah, he summons out Sprite Blue from his deck. Gets a search. I don't know which one he ends up searching. I think he searches Red. And then uh, he special summons it. And uh, he goes into, like... The Sprite Elf, but there were some things that I realized that there were some like illegal plays that he did because he does use the Karaz's effect to go into the Ancient Warrior monster. But if I'm not mistaken, the monster, the, after you use that, you can only use beast-related cards as link materials. And I he uses like all of his like cards that definitely aren't beasts. So I think there was like a misplay on all of us because I didn't catch that. And uh, yeah, that ended up happening. He has the Elf, a Picket Knight, and an Ancient Warrior and has two cards set. So it becomes my turn. I'm just like, okay, so let's see what could I do because I think Pick a Knight could negate a card. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to tribute those two and go into the Lava Golem. And then I had a Fusion Destiny. I sent Mali and, Dal and Denier to the Graveyard to summon out DPE. And then he had a DD Crow in his hand. So he does, I like, banish my Mali. So afterwards, I summoned out Denier, and then I had Mali. But I really had OTK here because he used a 
Forbidden Droplets and negated. I changed my mass change and I was gonna go into like something different, but I had so many mass changes in my hand and that he decided to scoop it. And I was like, yeah, I definitely had OTK because I would have gone into Anki, get another search of a mass change and that yeah, gets gave me round two. <laughs> One hab, two tier cards. One habanus, two tier cards. Three colors. Any color? Oh, there's a ninja person here? No, 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 no. Oh, yes. oh okay. for real? It is round three, and unfortunately, my camera did not capture anything from game one. So we are now playing on game two. I'm playing against my opponent, Juan, who is playing Ishizu Tirlament. And he got game one, so on game two, I decided to go first. And I do have a, a Silent Graveyard in my hand, so I'm setting up my board here. I had the Fusion Destiny to go first, so I'm locked into Darks. And then I just go into a DPE as well as a Destiny Hero Plasma, and I set the Silent Graveyard, hoping that that will at least give me a bit of an advantage here. But, the start of, but during the start of my opponent's turn, my opponent uh, activates an Infinite Impermanence. And I was just like, oh yeah, that's a... That's fantastic. So he has that, and then he has the other Ishizu cards, and I activate the sign of the graveyard to negate the uh, cards in his grave, and I'm just like, cool. So he has a, the instant fusion, summon another Kikalos, and then uh, using its effect to send, I think, and then, um, like, it, you can still send cards to the graveyard, the just effects will not activate. And he do, is also rushing the Kashatir cards that came out in the new set. But I am happy that I was able to, like, thwart his uh, game, uh, his, like, you know, the style of his cards right there just by... Uh, negating his stuff so then becomes uh my turn he activates like the he has the redoer and um yeah uh, what ends up happening here is just i was trying to figure out what his cards do so i absorbed the time thief redoer with the plasma i had the mass change i go into dark law i just attack and then um it was just like i'm just pressing for damage at this point he did have a cash tier that i think it was the tier limit yeah it was the tier limit. sorry he special summoned that and i was just like Okay, I'm just setting up this, and I summon up these, and I just attacked. That was really, I just had to go through, like, the beat down there. And it was just, like, a slow game there, but it, it it helped. You know, I got the win, so that was pretty cool. So we're going into game three now, and my opponent, Juan, is just going first, and he's just popping off. I don't have silent graveyards. I don't have any, like, anything in my hand to, like, negate his stuff, and he's just sending my cards to the graveyard, too, from my deck, and uh, quite a lot of uh, good cards, too. And, and I'm like, okay, and, uh, yeah, he's just summoning out. Like, as much as a lot of his things as possible, you know? So I'm just like, yeah, um, I'm, this deck is going to be dead by next week. So I'm don't, I'm, I'm not going to, like, complain about it. <laughs> like, I'm just here to play, and this deck is going to be dead next week. So um, I guess, like, one last uh, duel against Tier Limit is not going to be that big of a problem. So I did have the Silent Graveyard just to, like, activate because he sit, does still send cards from his deck to the Graveyard. So I was just kind of hoping that would help. But unfortunately, he mills the top three. Like, he uh, mills the rest of my Silent Graveyards, and I'm just like, yeah, I really can't do so much, and then I, I don't even think I end up, like, doing much, honestly, because my opponent just uh, kept manipulating my graveyard, bouncing back my cards, I couldn't use Mali, none of that stuff, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna summon out Stratos, try to search, I add the Ferris, and then he still has his plays, and then he negated my Ferris, and I'm just like, yeah, I think he's gonna uh, get it from here. I had the spooky dogwood just to try to get some uh, light point game, but I did not draw those really. You saw that in my graveyard because they kept getting milled. I set, and then he just summoned scatter shots and attacked me for game. So I lost round three, and that was unfortunate. It, went out of <laughs> it is the final round of the tournament, and I am playing none other than Danny. And this is the first time we've ever played against each other during an actual tournament. So he goes first. He had two face downs and summoned a hook kick. Then it becomes my turn. I try to go into my play, but he negates it. One of his Medulce cards, I can't remember what it was called, Promenade. And then I'm trying to go into more plays. He has more negations with infinite permanence. But thankfully, I opened up with the Vision Hero Vion. So I was just able to normal summon it and just like proceed like normal. 
And with this, I am trying to figure out a way to go into an OTK. It's like, you know what? I think I have OTK here as long as I play well. And as long as Danny did not have a Nibiru, because when we used to play a lot, he would sometimes have Nibiru in his hand, even though he only ran one and I had three and I never saw one. And um, I'm just like slowly trying to figure this stuff out. Like, I, I think I can OTK here as long as I uh, don't overextend. I could just do what I need to do. And I just summon up like DPE. I had the Denier bag go into Mali, Link off Mali and Wander Driver. So that way I can go into a Dread Decimator. And Dread Decimator gains attack points and also increases all the other uh, hero monsters it points to. And Danny did not know that. And uh, I was just able to proceed with over 8,000 points of damage. And he had to read that card to actually check it out because it was a pretty cool card. And I rarely ever go into it too. So it could have been the first time he ever actually saw me playing that. So um, I got game one and game two, My he goes first. And um, he has the Vernus Sills and is just popping off. He has the combos. He has the starts. And you're going to see like this Medulce board. And that, that's basically going to be uh, very formidable here. So he's just like going off the uh, message a lotto, getting so many searches, going back into teacher. That teacher is annoying, especially when Ticket is out on the field and Chateau. It's a pretty good combo. Just recycling any cards from the graveyard back to the hand. Like overall, these cards have some really good field uh, presence. And he also summoned out the butler from his deck and butler searched him out the secret village of spellcasters to shut down my spell cards. And I'm just like, wow, okay, well, uh, I have a solution to that. I am going to tribute two of his monsters for a lava golem. And he's still actually adding cards from his graveyard to his hand. But uh, yeah, I lava golem out that spellcaster so I could get back to my spell cards. I activated hero lives to summon out uh, Stratos from my deck to get a search of Ferris. And um I'm trying to go through my plays here, and I'm like, I, he has two set cards, so we'll see how well I do. So I go into Increase, Summon Out Bion, use Bion's Effect. I think I send Denier to the grave, and then I also search Polymerization. And then, like, he does uh, Imperm my uh, monster, and he just has, like, Interruptions here, so I can't do that. Oh, and I do try to, I Summon Out Mally, and I do try to use Polymerization as well. But, uh, yeah, I go into the one drug driver, activate Polymerization, and he has the D barrier to stop my fusions, and I'm just like shoot so unfortunately uh he still was able to block off my spell cards just from that um you know d barrier so i'm just like i'm going to dread decimator try to just like increase the attack points of my monsters and then he also had i believe it was kelbeck in his graveyard i think it was kelbeck to return three of my heroes in my graveyard back into my deck while chain while chaining that on top of my denier to return the banished mally to the top of my deck so i had like two mallies back in my deck and my uh, deniers all my my heroes decrease in attack points because my number of heroes in my grave are changed but uh yeah the, the least i could do is just like at least beat over his cards and then just like proceed to pass but my opponent he just has like he ditched the vernacil card then another card and i chain mass change going to dark law too so he searches another vernacil card so i activate dark law's effect to banish one of his cards i banish an l jelly but he's still gonna have like a way better uh board presence here because he has that he Brought back the hoop cake from his graveyard, and he's gonna go into Queen Tiramisu. And with me being less than four thousand life points, I knew where he was going because I played against him so many times to understand that the queen, man, uh, she's a pain. So uh, she just bounced back my cards, and I was like, "Yep, you got this one." So we're gonna scoop it up, and we're gonna go to game three. And it is here where I decide to go first, and I have an idea where I want to end off my turn because his monsters have so many on field presence that I really want to try to get into my plasma. And I really have a good hand. I just love this hero deck so much that I was just able to always kind of have the cards that I needed. But he did have an infinite impermanence that did put a bit, not really as much of a, uh, like a tight spot there because I did have a Rota to just end up searching the card instead. But I could have just used Rota for like anything. You know, I could have searched out any hero instead. And thankfully, I already had the uh, like the options to go into the plasma and everything. So I was just like able to just summon out three hero monsters on my field tribute all three of them to go into plasma and end off with both plasma and a sunriser and i believe i also have a uh malicious i think yeah i go into malicious and then i think i set a card i can't remember if it was mass change or d barrier but then i proceed to pass and then my opponent goes danny goes and then he has a cacheteer fenrir special summons it and drives to go to battle phase attack the plasma but he forgot my sunriser could pop his monster but at the end of battle phase, he activated evenly, and then I chained my D barrier to call Xyz, and I kept my plasma because I needed to keep that uh, board negation skill drain. He ends up uh, setting a monster, and he passes. So then it becomes uh, my turn, and I'm just like looking, uh, what can I do here? I want to reduce his life points as much as possible, just get to that OTK thing. So I just absorb his monster 
with the plasma and I go to sun uh, use a uh, miracle fusion go to Esperado and I just attack directly and then just like from here I'm just able to get the win and it was a really fun match it's the first time I ever played Danny in a tournament it was just really cool and it was just overall a good game for the both of us they're all the same set too, huh? Yeah. So I just got to and then he I got it. Yeah. 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 I just want my stuff on. Uh, Thunder for Chandra. Yeah, that's funny. Well, Dude, I didn't know they had this in Ultra. Yeah. Yeah. So in the end, we had two wins and two losses. And honestly, I could not complain. I was just so happy that we had another very important player tournament. It's been a while since we had that. And I just, um, you know, got to experience against Cacheteer. So I have a better... A chance of improving my deck for the new format and at the end we all did get some prizes so that was actually really cool i won a couple of prizes myself danny also got a few packs and uh what i got was like a deck box and a new t-shirt so that was pretty cool i'm not gonna complain i took those very gladly and uh yeah it was just overall a good day and it was like a last day for tier limits to go full power and i'm just not gonna miss that deck whatsoever so i cannot wait for next week when we enter a brand new format and i'm just very excited to see what decks are going to be waiting for us. Mm -hmm.